This video is all about the hydrolysis of halogenoalkanes. It's the only reaction that you need to study in the halogenoalkanes topic. So you can see on the whiteboard there I've got a very generalized formula there for halogenoalkanes. So we've got a carbon group, an R group, bonded to a halogen. So that could be a fluorine, a chlorine, a bromine or an iodine. Now in the presence of either aqueous hydroxide ions or water, this hydrolysis reaction will take place. There must be a source of heat and so sometimes you see a condition that it's carried out under reflux, which of course is a source of heat. I've also written up the, de the definition for hydrolysis for you there. So that's a reaction with water or aqueous hydroxide ions that breaks down a chemical compound. So effectively, we're going to break this up using these aqueous hydroxide ions. I will show you the water equation as well, but we'll start with the hydroxide ions. So first of all, have a think what could be the possible products of this substitution reaction? So I'm going to give you a clue that it's a substitution reaction. And there's the answer. I'm sure you got that right. So we produce an alcohol and a halide ion. And that, of course, would be aqueous as well. So we would produce, if we had a fluorine bonded to the carbon in the halogenoalkane, a fluoride ion, chlorine in the halogenoalkane, chloride, and so on. So you can see that these aqueous hydroxide ions have broken this halogenoalkane down and actually converted it to an alcohol. And there's the equation in general form for water, hydrolysis using water. And you can see you also get an alcohol formed you also get the halide ion formed, but you can see there, you also get an H plus ion. We'll look at a specific example now. So I've chosen chloromethane as my example for this, and I'm reacting that with hot aqueous hydroxide ions. The most common source of that would be something like sodium hydroxide aqueous, but for the equation, I'm just going to use the hydroxide ion. So again, before I show you the answer, have a think about what the products would be of this substitution reaction. I'm sure you got that perfectly right. So of course, the alcohol produced from chloromethane would be methanol, and the halide ion would be chloride. And just for completeness sake, there's the equation for the hydrolysis using water. So you can see we've still made methanol, we've still made the chloride ion, but we've also got the H plus ion in there to make the equation balance. I'm going to look at the mechanism for this reaction now. So this is the third mechanism, or one of the three mechanisms that you need to know at AS. And... I've drawn out the same halogenoalkane we had before, so chloromethane and a hydroxide ion. And you'll notice there I've actually shown a lone pair on the oxygen. That's going to be very important when it comes to the mechanism. So the first thing to appreciate, I'm sure you all know, is that chlorine has a relatively high electronegativity value. And so this bond here will be polar, which means that the pair of electrons in this covalent bond are slightly closer to the chlorine due to its high electronegativity. So we have a dipole this way around in this bond. We'll bring in the lone pair now. These are obviously negative because they represent a pair of electrons. And so you can see that there will be a movement of a pair of electrons from the hydroxide ion to this slightly positive electron deficient carbon atom. And because this pair of electrons is now a lot closer to the pair in the bond, 
they will be repelled completely onto that chlorine and effectively it will break this bond. Now we've seen this before in the electrophilic addition mechanism with alkenes where the bond's broken in such a way that this atom here has actually received both of the electrons from the bond and this atom here, the carbon, receives none from the bond and we call that heterolytic fission. You can see I've drawn the product up now and we have made the methanol, the alcohol. Effectively this is now a covalent bond between this oxygen and carbon. This is gone now as a chloride ion. If you think about why it's a chloride ion, we have the chlorine, we do a quick dot and cross diagram, it has seven electrons of its own in the outer shell and it's received, so there's the seventh one, it's received the electron that belonged to the carbon from the bond in this heterolytic fission and so it is in this form which is a chloride ion. We'll come on to the name of the mechanism now so you can see we have not got an addition reaction because we haven't got two reactants becoming just one product. Effectively we've swapped the chlorine for the hydroxide ion so we have what's called a substitution reaction. So this is substitution. What type of substitution is it? Well the hydroxide ion has donated a pair of electrons and electron pair donors are known as nucleophiles. So this is called nucleophilic substitution. So I've underlined there the hydroxide ion in green. It's acting as a nucleophile and that's because it's donated a pair of electrons to this electron deficient carbon as shown by this curly arrow, this movement of a pair of electrons in the mechanism.